It's the end of an era. All the parties, the stories. I'm gonna miss your smell. You were my first. What? I knew it. I knew it's it. It's true. Oh, man, I'm sorry I broke your leg. I wrote a song. <clears throat> sorry. Here we go. Keep the good times going with the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Whoa. Check out this new couch. The Jeff Fisher Show, brought to you by Bud Light, Buffalo Wild Wings, Super Park, and Dobbs Tyrant Auto. Good to have you with us. How are you? Everybody good? Everybody good? Huh? No. <laughs> no. The sun came up today. It was okay. a beautiful day. We'll figure yeah. this thing out. We'll figure it out. We got a short you know week. We don't have to dwell on this for very long. That's the good news. This is true. Because those, those 49ers. guys you hate. Yes, they're coming to town. They're coming to town. Is and it okay if I say you hate them? Yeah, I do. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to love them until I played them, and now I can't stand them forever. Thank so, you, Kevin so Gogan. Yeah. yeah, and Steve Young, and Jerry <laughs> Rice, and everybody, and Jim Drunkenmiller. Yes. <laughs> it's actually Drunkenmiller. Drunken whatever. Drunken, Drunken. Yeah. Drunken. I was, never mind. Drunken's funnier, though. <laughs> funnier, though. All right, uh, this is the Jeff Fisher Show, but as you guys understand, uh, this is a short week. The coaches, they have a short time to prepare for the 49ers, so Jeff will not be with us tonight. Coming up in the next segment, though, and for the rest of the hour, we will have uh, Jim Rams General Manager Les Sneed with us. And his wife, Kara Henderson Sneed, who was a former reporter for the NFL Network, so she gave us some perspective on how big a deal it is for the NFL Network and how big an undertaking it is for the Thursday night primetime football coming to St. Louis. But first, buddy, I guess we got to discuss what went on down in Dallas. Jeff Fisher said it right out of the box with us after the game. He didn't see it coming. None of us saw it coming. No. Um, you, you've been part of things like that in the NFL. How quickly, how easily is it? Maybe you haven't been part of something like that. Maybe. Well, I, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to move on if it was Sunday to Sunday. Right now you have the benefit of you have to get ready for Thursday, so you can put it out of your mind. Does that help from a player's perspective? It does, because you have to get ready. I mean, your whole brain is whitewashed with 49er stuff right now, so you don't get to really process what happened. You get to move on fast. I mean, if it was a normal week, you would watch film. Tuesday you would have off, so you have to sit and wallow in it. For, for a couple of days before you get back to the practice field. So this then, really is a 24-hour rule. Yes. There's, there's, no, there's no choice in the matter. Yeah, if you're going to have a, a – if you're going to fall on your face, at least you did it when you have a quick turnaround. You know, at least you can get back to work faster. You get a chance to redeem yourself. Everybody who was out there on the field that was in uniform probably can't wait for Thursday. They, they probably can't wait to get back on the field because of what you just did on Sunday. Right. I want to remind everybody you can participate in the show by calling us at 314-969-0101. In Illinois, it's 399-0101. Or you can text us 65780. Tweet us at Rams Radio using the hashtag Fisher Show. Um, among the things that the Rams have to straighten out here is, is getting off to slow starts on both sides of the ball. But let's focus on offense. Yeah. Now three straight games to open the season with no points scored in the first quarter. Um, and that really plagued them in week two at Atlanta, and obviously it was a problem again here in Dallas. you have any ideas there? Uh, fast starts to me. I, I, just driving over here, I was thinking about fast starts and how coaches, every coach says we got to start fast, we got to start fast. That's going all the way back to high school and Pop Warner. we got to start fast. Um, usually the teams that get off to fast starts are teams that can run the ball and run it consistently. Um, that's what it is. It's an attitude adjustment. Your first play is coming right at them. We're going to punch them right in the mouth and see what they've got that day. Well, Dallas did that. And they, they had success. Well, let's just stay with it. And they kept running the football. Well, the game, game plan became easy for the Cowboys and Tony Romo. So to me, starting slow on offense means you're not running the ball effectively. And I, I think we've been talking about that for, at, at, since preseason began, about running the ball and how the Rams are going to be successful moving the football on the ground. I think that is a reason why you start slow on offense. Well, on the other side of the ball, and defensively, and, and Jeff Fisher said he knew this week would be the week they'd get tested mm -hmm. uh, in, the ground, in the running game. Uh, I'm, I'm stunned that DeMarco Murray got loose for the big gains that he got loose for. I'm not yeah. stunned that he had a productive day. He's a good football player. But the 41 yard or the 36 yarder, that's the stuff you can't have. No, no, no. And we did this when we do What to Watch. Uh, we put that on TV. We put it on the radio. We talked all week. And I, I told people, and uh, we told people, that, that the Rams have the advantage on the defensive line. They should be able to handle this O line. And I think we were flat wrong. That group took it to the Rams. They were absolutely fantastic yesterday. They got angles when they needed them, hat on a hat blocking. Their pulls were perfect. Their timing was perfect. DeMarco Murray was timing up his blocks. They were playing faster than the Rams on game day. 
You know, so you have to take your head off to them. Um, I still do not think, and he could prove me wrong, that DeMarco Murray is that good. Right. I know he's good, but not 175 yards good. Right. You know, I, I think that was more of a function of what wasn't happening in the Rams uniform versus what they were doing. It would have been nice. I would have liked to have seen if the, how the game would have unfolded had Tavon Austin's punt return stood, whether that would have been a spark, changed things. But you've got, you've, got to, you've got to start eliminating the penalties. Now, I know Jeff Fisher last week said that he disagreed with the calls on special teams last week. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the situation was after reviewing film. We've not seen the game film. But I know this, you've got to stop committing penalties on special teams. That's nine enforced penalties now on returns yeah. in, in three games, and that's just too many. In fact, there were two on the Tavon Austin return that was wiped out. I hope Randy, where well, Randy's busy right now, he had a great stat on it uh, of the returnable punts, uh, seven returnable punts where Tavon Austin actually have a chance, had a chance to return the punt. Six were brought back with penalties. Wow. Six out of seven. I mean, it's pretty much every snap. We talked about this. Uh, field position it's on a penalty. Field position is affected, and you're taking away one of your best weapons on offense via punt return. You saw it. He can go the distance. If you can lock it up and clean up the so, nonsense, you have a chance to score so with it. Let's him. talk about clean the nonsense. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't continue with that situation. I know you want to play young young guys, but if young guys are continuing to make the same mistakes, then I'm not saying across the board, but there might be one or two guys you might have to put a veteran back out there. I mean, you don't you want starters out there if you can get away from it, get away with it. But in the meantime, until the situation stabilizes, you might be forced to replace a guy if he continues to commit the same. True. It has sent the same issue. True. Right? Uh, to me, on special teams, on the return units, uh, being out there, being on punt return, kick return, all that stuff, uh, you have to make a commitment to each other that you're going to pick up your man, know who to block, know everything, know who you have to go get, and know how to get them. That was the other thing. That was a Chuck Knoxism that we took all the way through to the Super Bowl with Vermeil. Know who to get and how to get them. You know, uh, if you get beat, you, you, if you, somebody beats you off the line in punt return and he's in front of you, you've got to be smart enough to know when to let him go. Know when the battle is lost and go pick up somebody else. I mean, if he gets in front of you and that pride thing kicks in and you grab a guy and pull him down by the jersey, you know, I mean, they're watching. It's, it's easy to call those things, especially when you have a reputation as one of the penalized special teams in the league. All right, we will be joined in the next segment for the rest of the show by Rams general manager Les Snead. He's with us here at Buffalo Wild Wings and the Jeff Fisher Show. If you want to participate, call us at 969-0101. In Illinois, it's 399-0101. You can text us at 65780 or tweet us at Rams Radio using the hashtag Fisher Show. Back in a moment on 101 ESPN and the Rams Radio Network. It's the end of an era. All the parties, the stories. I'm going to miss your smell. You were my first. What? I knew it. I knew it's it. It's true. Oh, man, I'm sorry I broke your leg. I wrote a song. <clears throat> sorry. Here we go. Keep the good times going with the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Whoa. Check out this new couch. Welcome back with DeMarco Farr. I'm Steve Savard. We're joined by Rams general manager Les Snead. And Les, thanks for pinch hitting tonight. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Jeff is a little busy. Short week. Short they're, week. They're burning the midnight oil. What, uh, give me the mood today at Rams Park. I was trying to think of, I knew that question would come up, and I was trying to think of a word that would be appropriate for radio. I think if you go to Chris Long's uh, comments yesterday, that kind of summed up how we play. But I think the, a good word is salty. I mean, we're, I think uh, everybody in the organization, and you're not really salty at any, anybody but yourself. You just feel like, you know what, you're in a fight, and guess what? It, it, you, you got a couple of black eyes and more, and you're ready to get back in the ring. Jeff's comments were didn't see it coming to us. I assume you, you feel the same way. Jeff was convinced. In fact, you know, I meet with him on Fridays, and I could tell Jeff felt very good about the game plan and everything that had gone on during the week. Yeah, I mean, I think you never go into to a battle thinking, okay, we're going to, you know, get beat like we did. And we've been playing well, and we've made our share of mistakes. But over the last, you know, couple of seasons, we, you know, you've definitely seen the momentum. So that was, that was one where you took a punch and – you weren't expecting it, but I think a lot of people said, yeah, I'll give them credit. They took it to us. I was driving over from doing uh, pinch hitting Jeff's television show, and I think you said it best. Hey, you got to give that offensive line credit. They, <laughs> they play good. They play good. They play good. It? Yeah, it's all about who plays better on game day. I wonder, and I'm trying to figure this out. Bad days happen in football. You've been through them. Player, coach, we've been calling games. Bad days happen. I just wonder if this is more of a shock because – 
of how or when coming off Atlanta where you started slow, you fought back, you had a chance to redeem, so to speak, in Dallas and fell flat again. I, I wonder if it's just a timing thing. Does that make sense to you? You, you know what's interesting, DeMarco, and as a general manager a lot of times, I, I have to think telescopically, not microscopically, yeah. uh, more big picture. And, and trust me, uh, not discouraged at all big picture. Going into this year, year two of, a new, of the second year of our regime, being as young as we are, I've mentioned to many people, this is what I call a grit year. By that I mean this is where you build your foundation because the adversity you face, it, it weighs more in year two. Year one, everybody's, it's, it's all new, you know, close losses or moral victories, things like that. So this is the year where, you know, your young players that are, we got 27 that are <laughs> rookies or first year players, they got to fill this. And guess what? Everybody on Monday mornings down, and guess what? You got to go play and, and and put this one behind you, and and that's part of growing up. That's part of going from being a young team to an experienced team. On Mondays, Jeff and his coaching staff spend time breaking down the game, play by play, and everything. To what extent do you meet with Jeff at some point or any point and talk about what went right in a game, what went wrong in a game? How many of those discussions do you have? Not that you get involved in coaching, but. Yeah, trust me, you don't want me in X's and O's at all. <laughs> well, we, don't know, you we don't know, but we, we know you're not going to get involved in that. But uh, the discussion about with Jeff or coaches about what went right, what's not going right, personnel-wise. You know, really, I think Jeff and I have a tradition. I, I, I mean, right after the game, we go to his office. At, you know, each, each, each – our, our locker room has one. Every opposing has a head coach's office. And, and, you know, we sit there before we get on the bus and talk about – you know, how we felt, what we saw, what we felt that day. And then you, you go watch film. And usually when we, if it's a road trip, when we get back to the building, Jeff and I, because we probably watch the, the, the film on the, on the plane and we'll converse a little bit. And then after watching film on Monday, we'll also converse it and talk about, hey, maybe the execution that didn't go right, uh, the good plays the opposing team made, maybe an individual performance that wasn't up to, to snuff, things like that. And, and we, we constantly converse at least I mean, during this time of uh, a year, we're going to converse about four times a day. Yeah, I would think so. The GM has to know how the team, how the team is performing, how each guy is performing, how units are performing. Right. You, have to, be, you have to know that. You definitely got to know. And, 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 again, my job, you know, is really te telescopically, and his is going to be sl slightly more microscopically this time of year. Jeff's a veteran, experienced guy, so he definitely can think telescopically too. But it's good to know, hey, what's going on week in and week out. And, and – you know how people are improving, uh, injuries. How we're gonna, how we're gonna, you know, I guess uh, adjust to injuries and things like that. All, all, all things considered. If this didn't hurt, you've got a problem. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Oh. For man to man, you're from from number one all the way down to the fifty third player. If you're not hurting, we've got we've got problems, right? No, and, and I think that's as Jeff yeah. mentioned, it's already Thursday for us, which yeah. is which is great because guess what? We get to get back in the ring yeah. Thursday night. We we probably don't need to practice, probably don't need rest. We're because you're hurting. What I like to say about the twenty four hour rule is you don't want to forget how that felt, but you got to be mature enough to not let those emotions affect your preparation for the next week because guess what next week's a new week and and there's 16 of these and it's a long season so that's what i think the 24 hour yeah. rule is. you don't want to forget how that felt but you don't want those emotions to affect how you prepare and even play next week i remember when i got my butt handed to me once and the next day waiting for the head coach to have his team speech sat in the front row and i just looked at him and had this look like tell me how that doesn't happen again please help me because I thought I was working hard. I thought I was here, and we just got hammered. Tell me how to avoid that again. That's the message I, I would be looking that, for. It, it, hey, we've yeah. all been kids. Yeah. We've all – some of us have raised kids. Guess what? You, you learn some of your best lessons the hard way. It doesn't feel good. It's not comfortable. You wish you didn't have to go through it. But on the other end of it, you were better for it. And I think we're going to be better for, for going through that. You were a player, your background, you've been a, a personnel guy for decades in the NFL. You're now a general manager for the first time. So take me, walk me through how you watch a game. Can you watch a game and remove emotion? Or you, how, how does no. that go for you? I'm no. laughing because, every, <laughs> no. because once a competitor, usually always a competitor. Definitely. I mean, you, you're going to, 
uh, football is an emotional sport. Sure That's is. the way it's built. It's a 16 game schedule. It's it's once so every game is yeah. You is, build you build up to this big so monumental event. You're going. I, I've worked on it. Uh, I've practiced it. Even in the summer, I've practiced it going because I'm a big guess what. And, and John Wooden's that way, and, and he never talked about winning a game or championships. It was win that play, forget that play, win the next play, forget that play, win the next play, and guess what? A cumulative effect occurs, and they won however many national championships. It may have been because they had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and a bunch of others and all that, but that was his philosophy. So I've tried to watch a game as a general manager that way because I am realistic where we are, and you know that in the course of a game, it, you could – just absolutely, it could be a debacle on play 20. Mm-hmm. And it could be, let's take the Arizona game. It could be a, no, a, a tipped ball, nose guard picks it off, touchdown. Well, that play may not be – that. you don't quit then. Right. You know that, guess what, you may have 15 more plays and you better win those, and guess what, it worked out for us that way. So I think that's what I've tried to do as a general manager is go, okay, we lost that play, are we going to win the next one? Back with more on 101 ESPN on the St. Louis Rams radio network. It's the end of an era. All the parties. The stories. I'm going to miss your smell. You were my first. What? I knew it. I knew it. It's true. Oh, man, I'm sorry I broke your leg. I wrote a song. Sorry. Here we go. Keep the good times going with the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Whoa. Check out this new couch. Welcome back. Rams GM Les Snead with us. Jeff Fisher and his coaching staff getting set the short week. They are burning the midnight oil, getting ready for the San Francisco 49ers. Prime time returns to the Edward Jones Dome with the NFL Network broadcast this Thursday night. Unless uh, the Colts go to San Francisco and win yesterday, an impressive win by Andrew Luck. They pull off a trade last week. And to me, it strikes me as highly unusual to see a guy like Trent Richardson on the move two weeks into the season. You tell me from a general manager standpoint, how unusual a trade that is in the National Football League in this day. Well, I think it's obvious. I mean, it's unusual because it, it doesn't hap- happen often that someone drafted, you know, top five, you know, basically a year, you know, a year ago is traded. Now, it's not shocking as you analyze it as a GM because you got a new regime in Cleveland. Uh, they're they're definitely building for the future, and they want to acquire as many picks as possible. And I, I think they they they've had Trent there and didn't win, and they feel like if they can get the the the, the quarterback, they will they will win. Now they had a, interestingly had a quarterback play well this, so they may have found him last week. But I think what they want to do is acquire enough picks to have ammo in the draft to go get the QB they want. Anytime you have a regime change, guess what? They didn't draft a guy. Right. So, uh, different opinion. Different, uh, different opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they thought he was good, but obviously they thought he was expendable. But I think, hey, the nice thing is Trent goes to a team that is, I think for a running back, you know, he goes to a team that's winning now. So they're kind of in their moment uh, right now. So I think, that, I think it's, it's – it's just kind of a win-win from afar. So I'm not shocked. It's unusual, but I'm not shocked that it happened. He hit the lottery, in my opinion, going to Indianapolis. Um, I liked him coming out. You liked him. We well, liked him at Bama. Him. Did you like him oh, coming definitely. out? Oh, yeah. definitely. I mean, he's, he's, you know, like what they've all said, the guy has got a rare combination of, of power and quickness uh, and, and just a tough runner and, and an NFL-built tight runner because he's going to go between the tackles. And I think with an Andrew Luck offense – I think yeah, I think when you watch the San Francisco game, they, they probably held him to about three yards of carry. But I think as Indy goes forward, especially with Andrew's passing ability, he's going to have more holes, more space than he did in Cleveland. And, and you, you go back to the importance. Uh, what you're talking about strikes me, the importance of continuity in an organization. And I know that when Stan Kroenke made the hires, he hopes, we hope you guys are in place for a long, long time. There hasn't been that here in St. Louis. Go back to the Cleveland situation. Mike Holmgren was in charge. They drafted Colt McCoy. He was either late second or third. Thought they got a bargain. Thought he might be the quarterback of the future. That didn't last long. Brandon Whedon, Brandon Whedon became available. They thought he's going to be the quarterback of the future. New regime comes in. Now they don't know what the quarterback situation is. They changed the running back situation. I mean, you can spin your wheel. You can keep spinning oh, yeah. the wheels a lot if everybody isn't on the same page year after year after year. I look at organization like the Ravens. 
that always seem to get the right guys, and they've had the same guy in charge, Ozzie Newsom, for what, a decade? More than a decade? More than a decade. So yeah. uh, that's, that is huge in this business because you're going to – Every time you go to draft, there's not one player on the – it's not like there's one player for that draft. There's a lot of players on the board that you could actually draft at that pick. When you have continuity, you're picking players that are going to help your scheme. You're, everybody in the building's working to make that thing successful. You mentioned the Ravens. I, I, I always go back you, – you take the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've only had three head coaches in their lifetime. And you look at even the Bill Cowher era, they had some years where they went seven and nine, eight and eight, because you're going to go through the cycle, they didn't panic, they didn't bring in a new regime, and that guy clears out his all of those play. Or let's say just change change from four three to three four. It may take you three years just to get that all untangled, and now you, that guy's out uh, again. So the Steelers did it, and Cower would then get them back going, and they'd win. And, and, and that I think that's continuity is huge. You just gotta you gotta weather some some storms to do it and sometimes in this day and age of sports you know ownerships are probably a little more apt to hey pull the trigger oh there's no question but if you know who you are and you know what you want and when you know what you're about and that doesn't change like you say for 10 years or 15 years during coach's tenure you got to leg up on somebody yeah, yeah, else like because somebody's re- reinventing reinventing yeah. themselves if a coach won one year and he loses the next he didn't become a bad coach it, you just the, you got to have the proper people in place to analyze. Was it injuries? Uh, you know, did, did did like I said, did a certain players get, did the core get a little older? And now that all right, now we got to rebuild. It's not like hey, this coach is now bad. It's just that some circumstances cause you to lose the other teams in the division because they've been losing, get better than you, and now you're losing. Now you got to take advantage of your draft slot. So it's just you got to have the right person analyzing it we're in a microwave society it's win now this is you know it's it's and then if you you don't win it's get somebody new and what happens is in the trent richardson case is new people come in they change schemes they jimmy johnson said this once always monitor the waiver wire of an organization who just changed regimes because they're more apt to get rid of good players because they're just it's not their player and not saying they're right or wrong they're just starting over their way I used, I remember that uh, getting a so-called good player, and then we got him, and suddenly he wasn't good anymore. Been through that before, right? Yeah. He shall remain nameless. Yes. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, but it's impossible. Late September. We're not supposed to keep secrets. We're not going to do that. Uh, late September for you, for GM, you couldn't possibly know what you're going to want or need in April, at this point. No, they definitely not. I mean, we yeah. <laughs> you set up the process where hey, let's and we got two first round draft picks, so we don't know where they're going to be picking. So obviously, uh, right now it looks good. Uh, it, the Redskins pick are looking good, but it's a 16 game season, and I expect them to to get on a roll at some point and, and make that pick not look so good. So we knew. That I, I like our guys to set up the process to know the entire the entire draft from from top to bottom so that you can maneuver and, and help your organization. So that's, that, that's what you're doing in September and, and on into the all-star season and combine season and all that. It doesn't stop for you. You're looking ahead. I that, mean, you, you, you're, you, you're squarely looking at right now, but you're at the same time. You've got your eyes on the next Oh, yeah, you yeah. Have I mean, to. this this week we, we're at Dallas, and I, I jumped out to my first – I went to the Thursday night game and then uh, jumped down to see Baylor. Uh, and it was, you know, it was 35-0 in the first quarter, but <laughs> – I think it ended up 70 to something. Yeah. But, you know, took advantage of that. You're, and, hey, even though you, you, you're salty today, uh, as a general manager, you, you, you may have to jump on some college tape tomorrow, uh, you know, in, in preps for, for the draft. How important is it, how exciting is it for you to see primetime football return? It's, Here that's, Thursday, what kind of an opportunity is that, do you think, to showcase the organization? It, it, that's major. And, and that's, I, that's where I go. We're a young team. We got 20, like we mentioned, twenty-seven guys are rookies or first-year players. They hadn't been on many Thursday night, Monday night games. We've got a Thursday night and Monday night game here. We had one here last year. That's why, trust me, fans. I know you're just like us. You're salty this morning, and but you're an, you can be an active ingredient on Thursday night. That's that that's going to showcase. You're going to have a lot of people from the NFL here, the networks here. If you come in and you're loud, we talk about third down. If you're loud first and second down, even third down, those people are going to take notice and go, you know what, let's bring primetime back here because it's a fun atmosphere 
And, you know, we got to do our job on the field too, and, and they'll want to come here. But that, the, the fans, you, you only live once. You only get so many primetime games in your lifetime. And take advantage of it. Enjoy the adrenaline. You're an active ingredient. Uh, you know, you can help our young players get experience quicker. Les, thanks, buddy. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. How about a hand for Les Need, Rams general welcome. manager? We appreciate the perspective. Good luck Thursday night against those 49ers. We'll take it. Let's hope we're a horse after Thursday's game. We Let's can't do hear it. ourselves talk. Let's do it again. For Les Need and uh, DeMarco Farr, thank you very much for tuning into the Jeff Fisher Show. Go Rams Thursday night against those 49ers.